Hey, how's everybody doing? Beautiful January day today. Um, this, I don't really know how this is going to go, but this is uh, it's sort of something that started off as, uh, I think the idea was a bit of a parody. Um, been egged into it a little bit by friends, um, but uh, I'm going to show you today the first few steps um, in basically being able to convert a lot of the jargon and translate a lot of the jargon that uh, comes across in American smokehouse barbecue videos to a bit more of a UK sort of centric UK translated um, way so here we go I'll show you what I've got uh, just over here right guys let me tell you a little bit about the um, the type of grill I use the barbecue I'm using it's basically I've got this um, in Morrison's at the end of the summer mid midway part way through the summer last year I think it was um, it's just a standard 40 centimeter grill um, but the key things that make this um, different and easy for you to uh, smoke with it's got the control the air control at the bottom which is really really important for temperature control um, and it's got these two um, flaps either side for controlling the um, amount of charcoal and for adding the uh, smoking wood and that sort of thing onto it um, if you put the lid on the temperature gauge which is I've found to be pretty accurate because I've tested it against the digital one as well um, and it's a pretty decent um, uh, purchase this one and it's got the top vent for controlling basically for uh, additional control of the temperature um, so that allows you to either open it right up when you're trying to get temperature up or shut it off as you're trying to get the temperature down and um, we'll do a little bit about that on another video um, the handle is really robust and strong and then this piece here is really good because I can actually put my digital thermometer on there for when I'm measuring temperatures of the internal temps of meat and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's as simple as it gets really. I think it cost me about 25 quid, 30 quid. The most important thing though with these, if you are going to buy, um, I mean you can go for, uh, if you've got Weber, that's obviously the best um, in this type costs you know depending on which model you go for but costs several hundred quid it can do um the only thing i would say if you're going to go for a cheaper one just make sure this is really like oh, that's that that doesn't want to be tinny sounding that's got to have it's got to have quite a decent enamel coating on it otherwise you're just wasting your time you're going to lose loads and loads of heat through that um this one i was impressed i opened the box up i had a look it's got quite a solid sort of sound to it um, and the construction of it isn't too bad you don't want something too flimsy it also has the ash box on the bottom which you can just take off you remove there so all the excess ash comes through there and then you've got your control for the um, for the air vents at the bottom here that moves your air vents open and closed when I'm actually cooking and trying to get um, a really keen control over the temperature I actually remove the ash box so I can just physically see the um, air vents underneath just to make sure from the bottom up just to make sure that they're open to the right sort of um, distance um, but yeah that's it pretty much I'm ready to go smoking and this cost me 25 quid I think and uh, it's not let me down yet so top job okay so today we are going to be preparing a couple of um, racks of ribs so I've got the full uh, the full rack here that I uh, just bought from Morrison's earlier um, They're pretty cheap to be honest three or four quid buys you a full strip I'm going to actually to be trimming this down so that we kind of I'm, I'm not so bothered about the short ribs there the really tiny ribs. It's more this part here um, I've got an additional set here um, I'm gonna hopefully just use something that's really easy to get from the supermarket and uh, show you how you can get really good results just on a standard barbecue Right, so the first part of the process really is just to prepare the ribs. I've taken the membrane off them, which you can just see there. It's basically, um, there's lots of videos to show you how to do it, but it's essentially just taking off the top layer of skin, uh, sinew that sort of sticks to the, to the ribs. So I've done that. Next thing I'm going to do is just cut these. I'm going to trim them up. So, all right, so there we go. They're trimmed up. Um, I've just taken this tail piece off. Well, I'm still going to smoke that but that's I mean they're so short there's not a lot you can do with those really this is the main event here um, it's probably about seven or eight ribs along there um, and you can see already they're pretty good shape there's some nice um, marbling through them but I haven't had to actually trim any excess fat from them 
this here is just the natural fat. I've trimmed it a little bit, but I'm gonna leave that in because obviously that helps to retain moisture. I'm gonna do the same with this pack here, which is basically just the same as this short um, piece at the top. And uh, we'll get to rubbing. Right, one thing I just wanted to show you, the membrane is this sort of thicker layer that sticks. It's on the back of the, the ribs. You do need to take that off because when it cooks, it gets really, really tough and it just won't make the overall um, eating experience at the end particularly good. So um, the way you do that is I'll just use the back of a spoon and basically just get into one of the gaps between the ribs. Um, you get a little bit peeled and then with some kitchen paper, you can actually just pull at it and it will come away in one clean piece. There we go. You just basically pull at it and it will just pull back pretty much over all of them. Right, we're starting to get down to the uh, the interesting bit now, which is, is the rub. This is the bit where I think people have their own recipes and a lot of people could get really, really hung up on um, what's good, what works better, what, you know, what um, adds to the flavour profile, what helps to bring out the tenderness in the meat and that type of thing. But essentially, I mean, you could, you could just rub these with salt and pepper. Um, there's so much other stuff that you can add to it. Uh, and I'll do a whole sort of separate mini video on, on the rub I use, which is this one here, which I've just made together, um, put it together using ingredients you can buy from supermarkets. Um, I'm gonna start by just putting some French's mustard onto each of the racks. So just a, a little line on each. Um, and I'm gonna rub that in. And that's going to act basically like a glue. That's going to be the bonding agent for the for the rub. So I'm going to go ahead now and just coat both sides of each of these with the mustard. Um, you can use hot mustard if you wanted to, but French has got a really nice sort of sweet balanced flavour uh, to give you a bit more of an authentic American barbecue taste. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that now and uh, come back when I'm ready to rub. Okay, so the mustard's now been applied to um, both sides, both top and bottom. The next thing is to apply the rub. Um, again, you can buy really expensive rubs. Um, they can run 10, 12, 15 pounds for some, but you can just use ingredients that are easily available, um, which is what I've done here. And um, yeah, just give each one a really, really good coating. Right, there you go. The first stage of the rub is complete. Um, I've got all three slabs, top and bottom. There's a little bit missing on that corner there. Um, the way you want to do this, although it's called a rub, you don't actually want to use it um, as a rub, as in pushing it into the meat. Just sprinkle it on, dust it on using a shaker, or just just you know using your hands liberally. Give it a good coat. See where there's a few hot spots in the mustard, and just cover those. Um, and what you can do uh, is leave that then for. Well, I'm going to leave mine for about half an hour just to make sure. Um, that it's gone in nicely and then I'm going to come back to it and apply another coating just before it goes on the grill Right, okay, we're about ready to to get lit actually now um, So what I've got here is one half one sort of side of the the grill um, I've packed in my uh, My unlit coals over here uh, I'm going to use a starter chimney um, just to get um, some of the smaller pieces lit so that we can actually put it on top of here, which we'll do uh, shortly. One of the best tips I can give from having done this for a couple of years is to get yourself the best charcoal you can. I go for grade A restaurant grill. Um, you can buy it for about 15 quid a bag from specialist uh, barbecue places. You can pick it up from Costco, places like that. It's so, so much better. The chunks are a lot bigger, they burn slower, they burn hotter. Um, if you do if you do have to go for anything else, um, just your regular stuff from the supermarket, it, it does the job, but you'll find yourself fighting the, um, the battle with temperature, having to keep add more in and stuff like that. This stuff just burns really, really well. Right, for my smoking wood, I'm gonna be using a mixture of uh, cherry, uh, which is this stuff here. Um, I've got three blocks of that um, I've got another couple of blocks as well um, just of oak so I'm going to see uh, give, give it a little bit of a mixture up around about a block an hour they probably last for about 45 minutes half an hour something like that but just sort of around about every 45 minutes to an hour chuck another block on you don't need the, the full smoke throughout the whole cook but we're looking at about five hours today so we're ready to go right we've just lit the um, the starter 
up like that and just put the uh, fire lighter underneath it the starter goes on top and within a good 10-15 minutes those coals will be white hot ready to be tipped over here okay so we're just about ready to start grilling um, the chimney uh, the starter has, uh, has almost come up to um, sort of white hot so we'll be pouring that onto the coals in a minute um, I think one of the only other points I wanted to make at this stage was probably from doing this just messing about this myself the last couple of years I think the the one thing more than anything that I'd say you just need to do is be patient um, don't try and rush anything don't try to panic and and cram things in without having the time give yourself the time to do it um, if any stage you kind of skip a part of the process like if you don't let the, the the starter come up to temperature and you chuck that on you're just going to add more time into it it's going to take longer and longer for it to actually um, get to the right temperature for, for cooking on so just each stage just take your time give yourself plenty of time and it will yield results it's so simple really um, a lot of people will have you believe that it is quite complex and you can make it complex but the basics of it it's pretty foolproof really so we're about to start cooking in there in uh, about the next five ten minutes okay this is what the start chimney looks like when it's um, pretty much ready to pour on um, it's absolutely well searing hot in there absolutely white hot underneath you can't really see it on the on the camera but towards the bottom the coals are absolutely white hot so we're just going to tip those over here now all right there we go um it's pretty angry at the moment it's pretty pretty hot um We've got the grill on, we've also got the pan of water down there, which basically just sits above the ribs. And what that'll do is act as a, a bit of a stabiliser for the temperature, but it'll also um, provide a little bit of steam as well, just to keep the whole atmosphere a little bit, um, yeah, a bit, bit of moisture in the, in the cook. You can't really see it too well here, but I've made sure my vents are nice and open at the bottom. You want to make sure they're not obscured by any uh, rogue loose pieces of charcoal. Um, we're just going to flop this over now and get the lid on. All right, so our lid is on. Um, it's been on for about five minutes, and as you can see, temperature is pretty raging. It's up at 300, so in an attempt to just get a bit of a control over that, I've closed the bottom vent almost tight, and uh, the top vent as well. And hopefully, we should see the temperature starting to just come down slightly in the next um, in the next few minutes. Okay, so we're holding fairly steady around 240, 250 at the moment, so. We're going to go ahead and um, just chuck these ribs on with a piece of piece of wood. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a piece of cherry wood. Um, this flavour, the smell and flavour that this gives off is absolutely amazing. So I'm just going to put it off to one side. Um, hopefully that will just um, kind of just smoke ever so gently just off to the side. Don't worry about those flames, they will completely go again once you pop the lid back on. Okay, so I'm just going to go straight onto the grill above the, um, the water pan with these ribs. I'm going to go bone side down to start with. Um, and you want to keep them just away from the direct area of the, of the smoke and the, uh, the coals, because obviously that's just going to circulate round inside the dome of the, of the grill. Um, I'm just going to load on the other pieces on here and um, we'll be ready to go. Wonderful, right, three lovely slabs just gone on now, so it's time to put the lid on. And uh, let's see how things set up. We should be getting some smoke coming through there fairly soon, there we go. And um, that'll come back up and should sit somewhere around about the 250 mark. And as I say, just use the top and the bottom adjusters. Probably the bottom ones are the most important for drawing the oxygen through to get the temperature up shut it down a little bit don't ever shut it off completely because you will choke it and that will cause the smoke will become quite acrid um, and obviously it will stall the fire will stall so you do need to be careful of that but there we go we're coming back up to temperature and 
I'll check on it in about an hour's time. All right, so we've been smoking for about an hour, um, just under an hour actually, and we're still sitting pretty much where we want to be, 250. Holding it, 250, 275, somewhere around there is pretty good. Um, if it does drop slightly below, it just means you're going to take a little bit longer to get it up to the temperature you want, so it's going to, overall, the cook's going to take a little bit longer. I've made up um, just a bit of a spray there, so that's um, mainly apple juice, but it's, it's apple juice with some oil um, and some apple cider vinegar. So we're just going to go ahead and pour the lid and just give these a little bit of a squirt. Okay, so just going to give these a bit of a squirt. Try not to get too much of it over the coals itself. This just helps to keep it nice and moist throughout the cook. So just do this probably every every 45 minutes or so after this. Thank you. 